Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Dig Dash and I'm back with another video. In this video I'm going to be looking at iOS 12 running on my iPad 10.5 inch Pro. So, I saw this the other day, um, the other day as in yesterday, and so I've had a good 24 hours or more to kind of sit back with it, get a feel for how it runs, see, kind of flesh out some of the changes that they made, um, see what worked, see what didn't really work for me and um, have a few suggestions of ways things could be improved but basically this is iOS 12 and let me just quickly show you that it's iOS 12 so iOS 12 your software is up to date this is the developers beta version so it's not fully finished but this is kind of like the main kind of um, structure of the release that will come out next month I do believe so let's get straight into it some of the changes that I've noticed Number one, the control center. That's changed. So you supposed to swipe up from the dock and now there is no control center. So what we can do now, if you swipe from, another big change, sorry. You just point this out. The time is now no longer in the middle, but to the left, the time of the date, to the right, are your various statistics such as like your Wi-Fi strength, or your battery, and obviously I've got a 4G iOS, Sorry, 4G iPad Pro. So the, the information is all the way to the right, and to access the control center, you swipe down from the right, just like on the, I do believe it's the iPhone 10. I haven't got an iPhone 10, but that's that's how it runs. So obviously you got your access to your quick settings. You know the the brightness. You just turn up a little bit. Sound. Let me turn that down. Voice memos, which is also new. Um, orientation blah 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 so that's not really changed but the way that you access it has changed and it's also nice for the fact that your background you can still view what is in, whatever's in your background if you're playing a YouTube video wherever it is you'll still see it playing whilst you've done that it's a nice little touch so that's, that's an improvement um, second thing I notice if you pull down from the left notifications which leads into another change the way that the notifications are handled so if I can just swipe so I do believe when you get more than two or sorry, more than three notifications, it groups the notifications, which is a vast improvement over the previous system. The previous system didn't group the notifications. So you just if you had hundreds of notifications, for example, like YouTube, the people that you subscribe to, you end up with just literally like hundreds and hundreds of notifications that you have to manually clear or clear all. So it was not a very good system. It just led to a very messy notification center. Um, it's completely. It's not like what you, like on Android, which is easy to manage. Things are grouped together. You can manage things on a case 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 by case basis, or you can. It's just to have a better notification system on Android. Whereas this is still, it's improved significantly the way that it's been grouped. So, you know, if you tap on it, it expands the notification. If you click on Show Less, it, you know, compacts the notification. So it has improved significantly, but at the same time, I think it's not as user friendly as on Android. Whereas if Android, you just swipe down, a notification will expand, and then you can just act on the notifications on a case by case basis or grouped or whatever you want to do. There's a more granular kind of way of dealing with things. So if if, if we expand, for example, <laughs> this notification, and we swipe. You can view it, we can manage it, you can deliver it quietly, you can turn off the notification. So, yes, it's definitely improved, but has it improved enough? Not at all. I, I, on my, data, on my, my daily phone is an Android phone, I have a Pixel phone, and it's running Android P, and this is feels like it's decades behind. <laughs> so, let me just clear all of that. It's the same kind of process as before to clear group clear notifications right so what's the next change the way that it handles multitasking so if you swipe up and to the right you get to your last screen if you swipe up wait and you swipe up and hold there you go there's all the all, all the different applications that you have open um so you know it's very much like the iPhone 10 yet again so it's, it's quite clear to see that eventually 
the next iteration of the iPad will do without the home button. Um, I guess you have face ID or whatever it is as a way of securely accessing your device. Um, should be a shame because the home button, touch ID works particularly well. But yes, that's that. So that's another change that I've noticed. I've also noticed that the application seem to open a little bit faster. So if you have a look at one of the new apps like um, Stocks, it seems to open just slightly faster. I mean, the iPad 10.5 Pro is quite quick as it is standard. It's quite fast. But it feels like the applications open a lot faster. I keep getting these notifications. That's why I have issues with notifications. I get so many notifications. Right, so it seems to open a little bit faster. So you have new apps such as like Voice Memo, which I'm not even going to get into. Um, you have Stocks. You also have this application called, uh, where is it gone? Measure as well, which uses AR augmented reality to measure things in reality so let's see if I can show you so you move iPad to start if I just quickly just grab a galaxy tap if I just it's the best way of doing this okay it's already kind of measured it so at a point There you go, add point. So there you go, it just kind of tells me how big it is. Size so of the screen, oh, it's going wrong. We're not going to go too deep into that. Right, let's just change the orientation, get that back to where it was, put that back where it was. So yes, that's another change. That added some stock apps, but there's like a million and one like measuring. AR apps within the app store so it's not a great deal but it's nice that it's been integrated to the phone obviously they have access to certain APIs um, and, and you know give a more fluid or more consistent performance on that side of things so um yeah I mean essentially that's kind of the main things that I picked up on the main things that made a difference to me I mean there's, I'm sure there's other features I've not gone into, but those are the ones that kind of really matter to me. The notifications, as you can see, the way that you access the, if you let me, the way that you access the command center, very useful. The change in the way that you deal with the notifications, so not so deal with the multitasking. It's kind of cool. I'm still trying to get used to it, but overall. You know, it's been a, it's a nice incremental improvement to iOS 12. I'm just not too happy about the way that they dealt with the notifications. I mean, it can be dealt with a whole lot better. I mean, my suggestion is, you know, to allow you to they'll use the gestures, for example, to compact the notifications that you get or to expand on them. You know, view, clear, manage. I mean, it just doesn't give you enough options to make it a granular experience. Oh, sorry, there's one more thing that I can show you. If we go into screen time, this is another one that I looked at as well. So as you look at, your, as you use your screen, as you, as you use your iPad, your device, your iPad, your your phone, wherever you're using, you can set limits to the applications that you use. You can choose which applications you want to use at all times, which applications that you want to block. And this is just a way of kind of managing the way that you interact with your device. Because you know, some people, a lot of people use the devices way too much in the sense that, you know, they're kind of you're at dinner and you're on your phone all the time rather than talking to your partner, your friends or whatever it is. So it's just trying to, this is a way of kind of prodding you to be a bit more social to get, kind of get yourself out there a little bit more and kind of monitor your own usage of your own device. For example, you know, one hour, 19 minutes, 42, 42 minutes of entertainment. 42 of YouTube, 17 minutes of productivity, and this is kind of the way that I've I've used my device. Even after the way, how many times I picked it up, you know, these are the amount of notifications I get on an hourly basis. It's just, it's quite granular. Longest session, 50 minutes. I do like to use a lot, use this device for a lot of YouTube. Um, last seven days, let's have a look. So yeah, over an hour of entertainment. I'm not sure how that works but yeah youtube definitely reason yeah i do a lot of browsing on my ipad um amazon baker reader 
So yeah, that's enough of a significant thing. I don't think I'm really going to check this too much, to be honest. I'm not going to set myself limits on the applications that I, I want to use, or I do use. What's the point? <laughs> Obviously, I just told you why this, it would be relevant for some people. But me, I don't want to restrict myself. It's not that deep for me. So yeah, anyway, guys, thanks for watching my video. You know, let me know what you think. You know, if you want to hook up to kind of get iOS 12, drop me a link. Sorry, drop me a message, drop a comment. And I can see if I can get you a link to iOS 12 so you can get that on your device. Um, you know, please share your comments and let me know what you found in iOS 12 or some things that, that you wished was improved or some things that you thought was amazing. You know, generally, just tell me what's up. Say hi. Anyway, guys, take, take care. Peace. Hope you have a wonderful day. I'm out. Oh, sorry. And please like and subscribe. You know, if you haven't liked or subscribed. Peace.